Hey, Jason here. Today's episode, I'm going to tell you one more reason why the housing market is in massive, massive, massive trouble. Before I get to that, though, I need to let you know that you can get the series as a podcast anywhere in the world for free on all major podcasting platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, Anchor, and more. You can get this as part of the I Love Value Investing podcast anywhere in the world for free. So the last few weeks, I've told you why banks, the housing market, commercial real estate market, car industry, and why hotels are in massive, massive, massive trouble, all of them, and how this affects the entire economy. Links for those will be below this. But some more news came out this past week that I want to tell you about that shows you one more reason that the housing market is in massive trouble. Okay, so on August, I'm reading my notes over here. On August 17th, 2020, so as of this recording, about a week ago, more information came out from the Mortgage Bankers Association. They essentially aggregate data for the mortgage industry and release that data. What they found was frankly stunning, horrific, awful, whatever wordage you want to use in that kind of realm is really bad. Um, again, for reference to this video, I'm not going to get in everything like I did in the last video. I think the last video was 20 or 30 minutes long on the housing market for that video, because all of that is still true that I talked about that, that will be, be, be linked below this video, like all the other ones um, where I've been talking about the industries that are in massive trouble. So I'm just going to stick to the in, <laughs> to the scary information that the uh, Mortgage Bankers Association released uh, about a week ago. As of this writing, again, this is a week ago, the uh, mortgage loans are now at an 8.22% of all mortgage loans, 8.22% delinquency rate. Uh, the highest rate it got during the financial crisis, I believe, uh, and again, I think I might have said this in the last video, but I think it was around four to six percent and so we're already worse now than at the very worst of the financial crisis that's scary by itself the reason it's not really showing yet is because of state and federal regulations that are barring foreclosures evictions um, from housing markets and or from housing and for like things like apartment buildings that can't go on forever though Again, it's probably the right thing to do. It's probably the humane thing to do right now. But it can't go on forever because the longer these companies, mortgage companies, banks, um, financial institutions don't get paid, the more they get hurt. And then the more the entire economy gets hurt. So it can't go on forever, even though it's probably the right and humane thing to do. Some other scary stats that came out from this. FHA loans, um, which in the U.S., if you're not in the U.S., I'll explain what that is. If you're in the U.S., you can get an FHA loan. It's called an FHA loan. Typically, that means you have to have 3.5% down instead of the normal 5, 10, 20% for other loan types. This uh, makes it easier for people to get into their first homes. This makes it easier for people to get into home loans in general because they are, there is far less money down. Again, typically 3.5%. FHA loans are at their highest delinquency rate on record. FHA loans by themselves are at a delinquency rate of about 16.2%. Again, most of this, according to the data, is first time home buyers. So people who have recently bought because of the low interest rates uh, based on the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates and the economy and all that. So my littlest one is wanting me to wake her up from a nap and it's not at her uh, time for her to get up yet. So I'm gonna make this video, then I'm gonna get her. But you could probably hear her on the monitor that's sitting right next to me, so I apologize for that. FHA loans. So these are people who recently bought Typically, first-time home buyers or people who don't have a lot of cash down, and they're already delinquent on their loans. People are buying, trying to buy, or the housing market since this coronavirus crisis has heated up because of Federal Reserve lowered interest rates to pretty much zero, 
and mortgage rates as of this recording are at or near historical lows ever. Um, we're looking in refinancing, for example, right now at a 2.75% interest rate. And just almost two years ago now, we moved into our new house and interest rate we got was 4.75. And that was a good rate. So interest rates have dropped by two full percentage points in about two years time. Sorry about that. My daughter wanted to up really bad. So my, <laughs> my dad had to go get her. Um, so anyways, getting back to the FHA loans again, sorry about that, is... So these are people who ha are trying to take advantage of super low interest rates, which make lower home payments, and they want to get on a home at this time. So this is an unintended consequence of the Federal Reserve trying to prop up the market during this time. Is it's lowered interest rates, so it's made the housing market kind of explode recently um, since this happened because interest rates have fallen so far and, frankly, so fast. But this is horrific. Again, 16.2% of all FHA loans are now delinquent. 18 or 8.2% of all loans overall are now delinquent to some degree. This is bad by itself. But when you consider that somebody just getting into a home is already delinquent on their loan, that's horrific. I mean, if they can't make their first or second payment into a home, why did they get into that home in the first place? Or frankly, how did they get into the home in the first place? Or does it, is this mean we're going back to 2005, 2006, 2007 timeframe where lenders are lowering their kind of threshold for people to get into homes because they're trying to make as much money as possible and they're trying to get as much uh, many people as in the homes as fast as possible before the crash? That's the first thought that came to my head when I saw that first-time home buyers, a huge percentage of first-time home buyers, are already delinquent on their loans. That should not happen. Uh, again, I'm a licensed real estate agent in Florida, in the state of Florida. I don't directly deal with the mortgage side of things in terms of getting them the financing, but I help my clients get through that process. And typically, at least through the guy I use, you have to give. Um, bank statements, you have to give uh, employment history, what you make from your employment history or what you make from your job, um, all that kind of stuff, which should again show if people are doing their jobs properly, that they have enough income to make payments for the entire term of the loan. But a huge percentage, percentage of new first time home buyers are already not able to make their loans or to make their payments on loans. So is there a decrease in loan standards? Is there some funny business going on here that's going to catch up with, the, with this in the long term like it did in the financial crisis? Um, I don't have the answers to those, but that is literally the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this the other day is that is horrific um, for the reasons I just mentioned. So to get into some of the um, even more details, uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm just trying to scan here. Okay, so this means, again, according to the Mortgage Bro Bankers Association, another note from them, an estimated 4.2 million homeowners uh, were on forbear forbearance plans of some kind as of June 28th. So as of this recording, that's almost two months old. As restrictions picked up in many states and cities countrywide, as people went two months more uh, longer without jobs, if they already lost their jobs, as unemployment benefits, the $600 extra a month expired because Congress and the United States government is a bunch of idiots and they can't come to some kind of agreement on what they should do to help people. The moratorium on evictions and foreclosures has been extended in Florida. I don't know. I can't, I don't think it's been extended nationwide. In Florida, it's been extended, I think, to September now. But September's getting pretty close. As of this recording, it is the 23rd of August. Um, I think it was the end of September, so that's still about a month that it's been extended. But this is just kicking the can down the road. This isn't solving the problem. 
um, these are horrific issues by themselves combined devastating possibly for for the um, housing industry again just based on the numbers we're already at a worse place now than we were at the worst of the financial crisis which was the worst housing crisis I think we've ever seen in the United States at least in our lifetimes that's the worst financial crisis we've ever seen and we're already based on the numbers in a worse place now than we were then it's just not showing yet because foreclosures and evictions are put on hold again probably a humane right thing to do but that can't go on forever it just can't because then that would affect the entire system because the banks aren't getting paid and that affects the entire system which again you can find out why and how that happens in the video below where i talked about banks being a massive trouble 4.2 million people or homeowners in forbearance. There's an average of about 2.3 people per household. So that is 2.3. So that's an estimated just under 10 million people that are in danger of getting foreclosed on once the foreclosure moratorium goes away. And again, this data is two months old, or at least that part of the data is two months old. So the number is probably 12, 15 million now. Again, horrific. Worst than the worst of what we saw during the financial crisis in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009 timeframe is what we're seeing, again, based on the numbers. This... And again, I'm just can't scanning over here in my notes um, to make sure I don't miss anything that I want to talk about. But this is, again, horrific. It's probably going to require another federal bailout of some kind, uh, another major moratorium of some kind on evictions, foreclosures for probably the rest of the year at the very least. Uh, with Corona, I mean, <laughs> I would, I'd, and I don't laugh to make light of this. Um, I laugh. I laugh when I get nervous um, or think of something kind of unpleasant. And this, what I was about to say, was extremely unpleasant. I don't know what the answers are, but the economy is not good. It doesn't matter what the market says. The economy is not good. It's not bouncing back back fast like a V shaped recovery, like they were all saying in the beginning. Again, I talked about in previous videos why I thought that was idiotic in the first place. But I can't, frankly, fathom between all of this, all of the various industries that I've said are having massive issues. Again, banks, the housing market already, commercial uh, real estate market, hotels, car industry. I can't, frankly, get my mind around how bad the econ economic situation is, frankly. And I've studied an enormous amount of world history and financial history. And I can't get my mind around how this is going to, or it is affecting everything already, but how it's likely again to keep getting worse. I say this in every video and I've been saying it for months now. Started saying this in March. Things are going to get bad or things are already bad now and they're going to get worse. I keep hoping that things will get fixed relatively soon. Um, with the coronavirus going away, with something happening, but frankly, until the coronavirus goes away or we learn how to deal with it, um, as in we learn how to live our lives kind of normally, somewhat normally, it's not going to go back to normal. Frankly, I don't think it ever will go back to normal. And again, I've talked about this in previous videos as well. I don't think, I think this is going to change the world forever. But until we can get back to some version of normal, this... The housing market issues, devastation by themselves. Real estate or commercial real estate, devastation by themselves. Banks, devastation by themselves. Car industry, devastation by themselves. Hotels, devastation by themselves. Combined, again, I cannot get my mind around how bad things could possibly get. Again, based on the numbers, 
we're in the worst economy since the Great Depression. Could things get worse than the Great Depression? Could this last longer than the Great Depression? I don't think it's going to last longer. Could things get as bad economically where we see like massive food lines and stuff like that? I don't know, but I don't know how, frankly, how the economic situation is going to keep kind of it as it is, where people are, in my opinion, kind of aloof about what's going on uh, because they see the market going straight up again. The S&P 500 just hit another, just hit another um, record, brand new record the other day. So the people see the economic situation or the market situation and they think things are fine. Things are not fine. They're not even close to fine. Um, but again, you're not seeing this kind of information in the mainstream media because you're just seeing the political crap for the upcoming election. You're seeing about the riots um, and the protests. You're seeing that kind of stuff, but you're not seeing anything about, frankly, these kind of issues that are horrific economically, horrific. Um, Again, I don't know what the answer is, and I've said this at, at, at the end of almost every video I've done like this since March. I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that, like I said earlier, things are bad now, and they're likely to get worse because of the amount of delinquencies and defaults and bankruptcies that are already beginning to happen. Uh, foreclosures and that as well, evictions, once the moratorium on those ends. Things are bad now, and they're going to get horrifically bad. Um, I frankly don't know how all of these problems can be fixed because even if you do a massive bailout of all of this, these, all of these, we're talking about literally trillions of dollars that would have to be given to these industries combined. Frankly, I don't think that's uh, fiscally possible. Uh, we can't even agree on another, what is it, one or two trillion dollar stimulus, and this would be huge compared to that. And again, I'm not saying those, those are the right things to do either, because at some point, this come back to going to come back and bite the United States, um, because we have too much debt. We have not as much money coming in. Uh, could uh, down the road affect the reserve currency issue or take the U.S. off the reserve at, off of having the reserve currency, which wields enormous power. That is way beyond my realm of expertise, though. That's more macro kind of currency. That's Ray Dalio's um, expertise where he talks about that. And I would highly recommend uh, viewing his series, uh, Changing World Order or Changing World of Money. What is it? Changing World Order, I think, is what it is. Fascinating. From a historical standpoint um, and just a learning standpoint but I don't know what the answer is but again I just can't physically get my mind around the devastation potential I don't know if it's probable I don't know if it's, po it's definitely possible I don't know if it's probable I don't know if it's likely I don't know what the percentages are but the likelihood of literal Economic devastation is higher than it's been in my lifetime, that's for sure. Uh, I'm 33, higher than it's been in my lifetime. Again, I don't know what the answer is to fix all these problems. And frankly, I'm going to talk about more problems. Um, some of them overseas, some for other things um, in the United States that where other issues are massive problems. So this is causing, and again, I talk about this in all the videos going back to March. This is going to cause issues here for you in your community on your daily life. It's going to cause issues for your city and your state. It's going to cause issues for the national uh, U.S. as a whole, and it's going to ca cause issues internationally. <laughs> and I think I said this in March, or I know I said this in March. I just don't remember which video it was on. The world economy has just never come to a stop like this. And the world economy is not stopped anymore like it was back in March, April, May. But it's still massively reduced. 
and I don't know what the answer is to fix these problems. Again, without the coronavirus, again, I don't, even if we fix the coronavirus tomorrow, I don't think people will go back to their normal lives for a long time. Do I think we're going to be in a 10 or 11, 12 year Great Depression? No, I don't. Do I think this is going to take multiple years to get out of? Yes, I do. Um, but again, I want to tell you all this stuff. Again, I don't like talking about this stuff. But I feel like I need to tell you this stuff to prepare. Because again, they're not talking about the mainstream media. They're not talking about it really anywhere. About not just, and if you do see something, it's about, let's say one inch, like the hotels. There was some information the other day about that coming out. About the whole hotels, delinquencies, and hotels being in trouble. But they never talk about the hotels combined with these other industries that make up the entire economy and how this whole picture kind of works together. If one industry was having massive problems, like, or even two industries back in the financial crisis, it was banking system and, uh, um, or three, sorry, banking system, housing, and car industry got in massive trouble in 2007, 2008, 2009, literally almost brought the entire financial system to the brink of collapse, according to the sources who are involved at the decisions at that time. Three major industries almost brought the entire economy, world's economy to collapse. Again, according to them. Right now we have six, seven, eight major industries that are in massive trouble. And nobody's talking about it. Nobody. And it, frankly, <laughs> drives me insane. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I'd love to hear if you think I missed something, if you have a different opinion on this, um, if you think these industries that I've been talking about aren't in trouble, if you think they're in more trouble, um, I'd love to hear your comments in uh, the comments below on YouTube, on the podcast. If you have any questions, let me know in, the, in those uh, comment boxes as well. If you're watching on YouTube, um, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we release a new video and releasing new videos all the time. If you're listening on the podcast, like, love, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I really appreciate your review as well because the more views, reviews, and listens we get to our um, content, the more people we can help with information like this. Um, but until next time, have a great day. Talk to you again soon.